somebody who agreed to come and talk to you today, who is the partner of corporate responsibility at Ernest & Young, but more importantly is one of our councillors because he is the recent former Prime Minister of the Netherlands, so a head of government himself. Um, he's not been Prime Minister once, he actually led that country through four administrations. And whilst he was in office, he implemented an enormous number of social re reforms and human rights legislation. So really a, a, a former head of government who has a lot to teach you and an awful lot to offer and is a, a courageous and, and, and believes in you enough to agree to come and talk to you today. And his name is Dr. Jan Peter Balkenende, former Prime Minister of the Netherlands. Dear friends, it's really great to be with you today. It's not easy to speak after Jamie Oliver. My God, what a performance. <laughs> great man. And uh, I remember when we had the G20 meeting in uh, London, then people said, and Jamie Oliver will be the cook. And now he is here giving such wonderful remarks about what's necessary today. I enjoyed yesterday evening very much. President Bill Clinton, Professor Mohammed Yunus, and Bob Geldof, and they're very clear in their statements what's necessary today, but also their appeal in your direction was very, very clear. I really enjoyed. So I thought, uh, let's start with saying something about these two fantastic guys. But this morning I was sitting over there, listening to the delegates with their speeches, listening to your questions. It was amazing. For me, it's the first time I'm here. But it's fantastic to listen to you, to your voices, to your comments. And I have the conviction that's absolutely necessary that the world listens to you. My whole life was busy with thinking about the concept of a responsible society. Nobody is living for only self-interest. You have an obligation to work for others, to feel solidarity, to take action. And that is also what brings you together. In my speech, I would like to mention three elements, and I think three key elements when we talk about social developments. The first is the necessity to think in the long term. The second is to integrate sustainability in everything we do. And the third is to work on new alliances. I would, I would like to speak about these three elements. Do you agree with these three elements? This is the moment of interaction. First, about the element of the long-term focus. Let me start with a simple story. A few months ago, we had in our company, Ernst Young, a student, and he was interested in the economic performance of companies, and he compared family businesses with other businesses. And what was the outcome of his research? The family businesses did much better than others. And then, of course, I asked the student, what's the reason behind it? And then he said, it has to do with long-term thinking. Because a family business is not only about your interest today, no, the question is, can we go on? Will there be a business for my children and grandchildren? It's another focus. It was very, very clear. I'm from the Netherlands, and you probably know that uh, a large part of the country is below sea level. So we have constantly the struggle against the water. We had a terrible water flood in 1953. So if we want to keep our feet dry, we must be aware of the risks. That means you have to invest every year in the quality of your dikes and use because we have the rise of the sea level, we have the melting of the ice caps in the Alps that can jeopardize the life of my country. So you need a long-term focus for protection measures, but also to think about climate change issues. And at the global scale, the issues of today, environmental issues, Energy, security, poverty, all these issues do have a long-term character. And I think we should underline the fact that in everything we do, we must take into account the long-term focus. And that's a general mindset, but it's also a matter of practical measures. Let's say 
what are we going to do with the bonuses for people in the business sector? Should a bonus be linked with the profits in the short run? Or should the bonus be linked to your contribution to sustainability or long-term aspects? I think the choice is very clear. Long-term thinking is essential. That brings me to my second point. Integrate sustainability in everything we do. And let me say something about an experience I had last week on the 10th of October. We had in the Netherlands Sustainability Day. A fantastic day with hundreds of projects talking about sustainability issues. And it's on schools, on universities, with NGOs, business sector and so on. In the morning I went to a school and I talked with young children, seven or eight years old. And they were clear, they said, if we do not save energy, it will affect the life of people elsewhere in the world. I think it was a good remark when you're seven or eight years old. I had radio interviews, I talked with business, and at the end of the day, we had a meeting with students uh, in the University of Utrecht. And there was a clear demand of all the students. They said to the rectors of the universities in the Netherlands, we want to have a situation that in all our curricula, sustainability will be part of it, an integral part of the curricula, curricula at the university. I think it was a great remark of the students. Later uh, this afternoon, this, this morning, Paul Polman uh, will give a speech, the CEO of Unilever. Together with Paul and seven other CEOs of Dutch multinationals, we founded the Dutch Sustainable Growth Coalition. And these companies are convinced that it is necessary to integrate sustainability in the strategy of your company, defining the KPIs, being honest what you're realizing. The fact that we have 9 billion people in 2050, that their scarcity of natural resources means that private companies do have their own responsibility. You have to change your policy. And the Dutch Sustainable Growth Coalition is about to talk about shaping new business models, to share the views we have with others, with other companies, with NGOs, academia, with governments, and to stimulate the debate. It is really necessary. And in my company, in Tensen Young, you can see that the world is changing. An auditor, are the auditors here? Well, you know, the training has been, you are busy with checking the financial reporting. That's a matter of assurance. But the life of an auditor is changing because it's not only about financial reporting, it's also about social reporting. And when an auditor is obliged to make remarks about social reporting, then it becomes seriously. That's what on the agenda. So you can see things are changing. And the World Economic Forum, they made a new element, and that's called a sustainability adjusted competitive index. The fact that the World Economic Forum is talking these terms means that things are changing. So it's a matter of long-term thinking, not about me today, but about us tomorrow. And it's also about integrating sustainability in your strategy. I think that's also what's on your agenda. Yesterday, uh, Dave, I really enjoyed the flag ceremony. It reminded me a bit uh, of the Olympic Games. A fantastic atmosphere in London, well organized. I really enjoyed it. And uh, after uh, the events, we have a beautiful um, location that's called the Holland Heineken Haus. 6,000 Dutch people clothed in orange, having fun with each other, celebrating everything. It was a great time. There was also one uh, person, uh, and he, made, he, he published the following tweet message. He said, yesterday evening, I touched Jan Pieter Balkenende. Well, that might be the case. And his second sentence was, now I can peacefully die. That was a strange experience, I must say. My third point. It's so essential that we are talking about new alliances. I listened carefully to what Bob Geldof told yesterday. And Bob was so clear in his remarks that he said we need a new paradigm. And he was critical about the current structures. The G8, the G20. He said, oh, the G20 was nice for one hour. And I remember very well, I attended the G20 meeting in London in 2009. I think that was the good atmosphere. That was a clear agenda. The WTO negotiations should be finalized within one year. We said we must make a success of Copenhagen, the climate summit. But after one year, I said to my colleagues, 
people will ask, that were your promises, but what have you realized? And therefore I can understand the critical remarks of Bob. And when you talk about these critical remarks, it's also about giving views on alternatives, work on new paradigm. And that was the reason why he said to you, we must think about these issues in another way. Today you can see the fading away of the traditional nation state. We've been used to that. Today it's a world of alliances between governments, multinationals, NGOs, religious groups and others. And you can see a new way of decision making. I had a meeting with people from the World Wildlife Fund. They said, if you are considering the good companies of today, companies who are choosing for sustainability, they always work together with NGOs. So it is a matter of a new paradigm, new alliances. And I think that is really the fantastic uh, element of today, that we can think about new structures. Of course we need the United Nations, of course we need IMF and the World Bank, but it's not enough. I've been in politics for a long time, but I have the clear conviction that if developments do not have the support and are carried out by people just like you and me, then you will fail. In this hall, there's so much enthusiasm, positive orientation. What I hear today is that private companies in the Netherlands are saying, we must have a dialogue with young people. What I also notice is that companies are saying, if we do not choose for sustainability, we will have difficulties to attract young people to work for us. That is the world in which we're living. What I noticed here, and I must say it's, it's fantastic to be here with you, but it's also another world. In countries you also will find populist tendencies, nationalist tendencies, selfishness, egoism. And I think we have to make a choice. It's my clear conviction that if countries are related to populism or nationalism, it will not lead to any solution. That was the message I listened very I listened carefully to you, that was your very clear message to me this morning was do invest in education, take into account the cultural backgrounds, learn from each other. I think these things can be really a source of inspiration. I think the 21st century is a great century because there are so many possibilities. Everything is connected, the world of internet, everything is there. It's also an, an age of new inventions, the role of science will lead to a lot of solutions. But all these solutions must be based on an atmosphere of justice, responsibility, long-term orientation. And therefore, it's so important that people like you are taking their responsibilities. Of course, we have politics always, but it's not enough. I really have the impression that the comments you made this morning, and you will make during the next few days, will have a significant meaning for the debate worldwide. I think it's fantastic to be young in these days. It's fantastic to share views with others, to talk about common challenges, to work for a better world, to talk about the common good. And therefore, the request of President Clinton yesterday was really fantastic. He asked you to be engaged and to be creative. The story of Yunus was really fantastic. What he did in the sphere of microfinancing, it's a new concept. And Bob Geldof, who was very clear in his statement about the necessity to have new structures at a global scale. Dear friends, I think One Young World is a phenomenon. And I want to thank David and Kate for what you're doing. And it's much more than organizing an event. It's about having a view on the future, a view on the 21st century, a view on responsibility, a view on sustainability and how to integrate these things. And therefore, I think the meaning of One Young World is much more than maybe we think at the moment. It has to do with the challenge to work on a better world, to work for a good 
society to do everything that's necessary to create a better life for everyone in the world. So therefore, it's great to be here. One Young World is a great event in the organization. And from the bottom of my heart, after having listened to you, I say, the world needs you. Thank you. Thank you. So a huge round of applause for Jan-Peter. Thank you very much.